Hello everyone, this is 18th August 2013 and I'm Madhusudan Raj, your host. So the Indian economy continues to take the nose dive and in last week some major things have happened. For example, the stock market has crashed. Uh, the rupee is getting weaker and weaker day by day as I'm already telling you. And then the government is also becoming very desperate and they are doing all kind of stupid things. And because of that, you know, uh, policy uncertainty remains. So I want to begin today's uh, uh, session by discussing some of the past events and then what happened on last Friday in the Indian stock market. So uh, we begin with this uh, news regarding India's gold guzzling still remaining very high so we all know that the Indian government has waged a war on gold and uh, they think that gold is responsible for this widening widening current account deficit and that is what is pressurizing the Reserve Bank of India from reducing their market interest rate and that is what is uh, creating problem from the for the Indian growth rate so the government and its its bureaucrats and politicians are thinking that it is because of this uh, rising gold import the current account deficit is widening and because of that uh, growth is you know in trouble RBI is crippled you know the, they are not in position to reduce the market interest rate and that's why they have waged a war against the gold and you know, gold and we know that they have increased the import duty from 4% to 6% to 8% they have also banned import of gold items you know they have asked the gold dwellers to pay in cash if they want to import gold from outside etc etc but despite all these measures as I was already telling you and it was very much expected that the government cannot stop people from buying gold they cannot stop peaceful people from voluntarily trading the goods which they want so uh, people want to buy gold because inflation remains very high on one side and they want to protect their wealth from this rising inflation which is eating into their wealth so that's why they are going to buy gold and on the other side obviously if they want to buy gold then sellers will be there to provide this you know gold to them so what has happened is this india indian government's war on gold is failing right now despite their all these measures what happened is that india's gold imports hit 2.9 billion in july up from 2.45 billion in june official data showed on monday confirming finance minister chidambaram's fear that despite hikes in import duties and steps by the RBI to stem supply demands is demand is on the rise again so as I said you know the smuggling has you know gone up now gold smuggling and that was very much expected you know 4,000 year old history human history shows us that whenever government governments tries to you know uh, uh, curb the consumption of something by raising its price or doing you know completely banning it you know uh, putting this kind of protective barriers on you know free foreign trade what will happen is immediately the the free market or what we call or what they call what the state officials call the black market will spring up to fulfill this demands the most you know urgent wants of its consumers so the gold import has gone up and Chidambaram is saying that he wants to curb gold purchases because they are the most costly non-essential item that India imports. Now, gold is not a non-essential item. Obviously, it is the most essential item right now in this highly inflationary economy. So, Mr. Chidambaram is obviously wrong, but as I said, he cannot fool the people. People are going to buy gold because gold you know import rise is not responsible for this widening current account deficit inflation is and that is what the second you know uh, news is rising inflation raises stakes in rupee defense and what is happening is because of this uh, inflation you know increasing the supply of money and credit the rupee is also weakening you know it was 
it is just trading in the band of something like 60 rupees per dollar to 61 61 50 rupees per dollar since quite long period of time so recently it again appreciated to 61.45 rupees per dollar or something like that and then the uh, news came out about this inflation the headline inflation rate measured by the wholesale price index accelerated to 5.79 percent annually in july from 4.86 percent in june so government's number wpi itself is now showing that the inflation in terms of price inflation has, is accelerating in july compared to june and actually if you go and you know see the as i said the real market data then the price is you know rising by double digit in fact the onion prices are going up like anything right now it's you know it's something like trading at 80 rupees per kilogram or even in some cities some markets it is you know trading at 100 rupees per kilogram and now the indian government is forced to import onions from places like pakistan and china the traders are forced to bring the supply from other places but what i'm saying is this rising price is just one effect of inflation if inflation is created by the rbi already when they're printing and creating this money out of thin air and these are all the rising prices just one effect of that inflation but in any case inflation went up and rupee is also you know weakening so what happened is the indian government panic and rbi panic and they did something which was absolutely unexpected from people but you know if you know what governments are about all about then you you know those people knew that this is what is coming so India goes back to two decades as RBI imposes capital curbs to stabilize rupees. So they have introduced capital control measures. So you cannot convert your currency into foreign currency without asking for government's per, you know, permission. And now this shows the desperation of Indian government and the Indian Central Bank RBI because the rupee is continuously weakening. Gold import is not getting constrained inflation is going out of hand despite all their you know uh, policies brow high and everything so that's why they finally panicked which was as i said very much expected and then they raised this you know they you know you know erected this capital co you know controls the reserve bank of india imposed partial capital controls on companies and individuals to stabilize the rupee but the steps are likely to be perceived as turning the clock back on two decades of liberalization. So during the 1990s, also this kind of uh, you know a crisis, you know balance of account crisis was there, and they were forced. The Indian government was forced to depreciate the rupee, and at that time also this kind of panic was there. So many people are looking the situation as some kind of going back to two decades you know during the time of 1990 but obviously situation is a bit different this time around but it is obviously not uh, uh, that easy means you know we must worry about this problem because the rupee is not stabilizing and it's not going to stabilize as long as RBI is inflating the currency it's RBI itself is depreciating the, the, the currency although they have you know took some measures of you know sucking the liquidity of the market but as i said that is not enough because they have pumped a lot of money into the market every day since the beginning of this financial crisis in 2007 but anyways they they panicked and they have introduced this capital control measures so what are these measures overseas direct investment by indian companies has been cut three-fourths 100% from 400% making it more difficult for local corporates to buy overseas assets but the central bank exempted uh, state run navaratna companies including all india and ongc videsh to ensure that it moves do not cripple energy security so <clears throat> the indian firms will have you know have to face a lot of troubles if they want to acquire foreign assets because now they cannot easily turn their rupees into dollars RBI also lowered overseas remittances by locals to 75,000 US dollar a year from 200,000 US dollars and prohibited investments in overseas property dashing well the Indians dreams of owning home abroad homes abroad so they have you know as I said introduced this capital control measures and they have panic and what happened after that this was in this was on 15th August uh, Thursday 
and on and on and uh, the immediate impact of this you know government panicking and uh, RBI's this capital control measures was felt on the Indian stock market on the next day 16th August so 16th August Friday Sensex slumps by 770 points because of capital controls and US stimulus fears the nifty slumped four percent on Friday the Reserve Bank of India measures late on Wednesday to restrict how much its, in, in its citizens can, and companies can invest abroad also raise fears of outright capital controls that would further undermine the confidence of foreign investors hitting the rupee. So it slumped by 770 points and the rupee briefly touched 62 rupees per dollar and because of that right now there is a lot of you know panic going on we don't know what's going to happen in next week but as I said these things were very much expected and even after all this panic uh, the finance minister Chidambaram is saying that expect calm to return to domestic markets He's, he thinks that the uh, fundamentals of the Indian economy had not changed and ask investors to wait for the April June quarter growth numbers due at the end of the month so He's thinking that uh, Indian economy's fundamentals are very strong and nothing is going to happen. We should not panic. But as I said, the fundamentals themselves are deteriorating right now because these RBI central bank money pumping has created a big bubble into housing sector, auto sector, the whole economy's capital structure, production stru structure is out of whack right now. It's, it's right now, uh, as I said, it's under the recession and obviously the fundamentals are not very strong although Indian people are very hardworking and thirsty they are saving but the government's lunatic policies and central bank policies are creating all this mess so we don't know when the rupee is going to you know you know stabilize as I said probably what is happening right now is not probably what is happening right now is all the currencies paper currencies are going down and ultimately they will you know achieve their real value of you know zero right but on the other side as I said the real money market chosen money gold is right now again it has again you know resume its upward trend and it is you know it briefly touched in fact in futures market it is already trading above 31,000 psychological level again silver is also jump by three dollars in just one week time so the gold and silver has you know as I said resumes it, its uptrend again the price suppression looks like over and it will continue to go up and as I said this is the only you know way in which we guys are going to uh, protect our wealth from RBI's this lunatic inflationary policies and as I said you know just don't go into paper promises don't, don't buy government bonds and don't buy mutual funds etc you know just this is my you know suggestion obviously I'm not a financial advisor so this is not a formal advice but as I said uh, continue to stick with you know physical real assets continue to buy gold and silver because th that th those metals are the ones you know who is going to protect us, protect us in the end so thank you very much for watching me you know I will come back again with the update as I said nothing has changed so far the Indian economy continues to deteriorate and I don't think so anything will change as long as the same policies are being followed by the Indian Central Bank and the Indian government and as I said the uh, market must you know cleans itself you know we must go through this very painful adjustment process called recession as long as this bust is not allowed to you know run its natural course economy will not go back to its you know, natural normal path you know without this uh, painful recession not only in Indian economy the world economy things will not improve and uh, as I said the governments and the central bank they are not ready uh, to allow this adjustment to take place so I think ultimately we are going to see some kind of you know crash of the whole monetary and you know monetary system and our economy some kind of big readjustment is coming I think we are going to see different kind of monetary system in future I don't know how much time it will take or what kind of you know form the new monetary system will have whether it will have some kind of 
you know, goal component with it, maybe some kind of phony goal star, or I don't know, but the present status quo is obviously in trouble, and I don't think so it will continue for long. So as I said, you guys take care of yourself out there, and I'll see you next week, or maybe after next week, whenever something important happens in the Indian economy. So thank you very much for watching me, and good night.